stages of the game. Yeah, the Kronos, definitely very late game focused. And Fafnir is strong at all points in the game, but really excels late game when he's able to go ahead and use that area of effect attack speed buff for the rest of his team. Uh, I like the soul pickup for Tarrant County. Uh, the slow immunity on her disapparate is very, very strong against the Osiris, a character who relies on slows to stick on the targets. Osiris definitely somebody that mages tend to have problems with, so soul is smart pickup for Tarrant County here. So banning out Erling Shin on the side of Florida, and then over on the side of Tarrant, they are going to be banning out the Kamazots, both very respectable characters, so I don't think it, that was really anything too surprising there. That's, that's pretty standard. And then back over into Florida, what do you think they're going to ban up next? Well, it looks like Tarrant is still looking for a hunter. Oh, and there it is. Ho Yi, what did they ban out? Sorry, Bologna. Bologna. Oh, they like, banned out Bologna. That's interesting. Bologna... Maybe one of the only characters I can give Osiris a run for money in the a run for uh, his money in the laning phase. So that might be the, the thought process they're going for there. But that does leave Ho Yi open. Um, for Flora Poly, they actually have picked Ho Yi, definitely probably the best hunter uh, still open here. Well, and I think the main thing with the Bologna ban out is that they recognize that, hey, we are focused on auto attacks. So what's one character that has a disarm effect? One of the more popular options is Bologna. There's a couple of more, you know, subtle ones out there, but not as effective as Bologna who can get right up directly in the face of any backline character, such as Kronos, and completely mess up their Thursday. So going back into the picks, Kernanos, not a character we see very often, but crit changes have given opportunity to new ADCs. Yeah, absolutely. It's a little interesting seeing him picked up before Tarrant picks up their hunter. Um, he has some bad matchups. I was just about, I was just about to say AMC can give him a run for his money because AMC just has that really, really strong push and something Kronanos kind of thrives on is that lane pressure and his ability to push, especially with Blue Stone on his two ability. So that's something that they might have wanted to hold on to until last pick because Tarrant recognizing what Kronanos has problems with and instantly locks in that AMC. You know, I really, even outside of just that 1v1 boxing potential, I really love taking advantage of the early stages of the game. And AMC is one of my favorite AD carries currently right now because him combined with most popular Guardians can just uh, decimate buffs, decimate lane, and do whatever they want. They can actually give opportunity for the middle lane and jungler to invade onto your own side of the map just because you don't really have the flexibility, the capability to box them out. Now, granted, there's some you know odd scenarios where uh, you could probably catch AMC out in the jungle at a very bad time, and if you are able to successfully CC chain, it's a very easy first blood, but that's so hard to do sometimes. Yeah, especially once he gets the movement speed from his hives ranked up a little bit. He's very slippery. Tarrant County finishing their draft with a Ratatosker, which I really like. Ratatosker getting buffed uh, pretty heavily this current patch. He does more damage with his Acorn Spin, and he, uh, the scaling is also increased. So just a lot more damage coming out of that Ratatosker. And it looks like it's actually going to be in the solo lane as Osaf picks that up because they do have a Wheelix for Gladys to jungle with. So... Now, um, we, we have a little bit of an oddity on both sides. So, uh, you know, we, we talked a little bit about Tarrant County, but what about uh, the guys over on Florida per Florida Poly Purple who have both Sun Wukong and a uh, Osiris? I mean, is that Sun Wukong jungle or is that Osiris jungle? Both Sun Wukong and Osiris have seen success in the jungle uh, in competitive play, and they've both obviously seen success in the solo lane in competitive play. So I, I actually am not sure who's going where, because I'm not sure who their solo lane player is and who their jungle player is. So we're going to take a peek at that once the game launches. Uh, but that's definitely pretty interesting. Uh, the, yeah. double, the double warrior front line to supplement the late game damage coming out of the Kronos. But no, it's, it's definitely going to be an interesting matchup as we get set up. Don't you guys go anywhere. We'll be back in just a moment and let, these, uh, let the action begin.
Welcome back, everybody. My name is Major. I'm joined by Penny and Buzz. We're getting ready to watch the first matchup of the day, Tarrant County College versus Florida Poly Purple. And both these guys are getting loaded onto the map. Everything looking pretty standard here, but we finally have the answer to our mystery question of who is the jungler and who is the solo, at least on Florida Poly Purple side, where we see So Kong looks to be going into that solo lane and Osiris in the jungle. Yeah, I mean, either way could have worked there. Uh, they're both good solo laners, and they're both good junglers. They both have good clear pressure, ganks, etc. So, um, you know, could have gone either way there. And it's pretty standard start otherwise for the rest of both teams. Oh, I mean, yeah. The only thing worth noting is uh, Tarrant County College, you know, I think they like Bumba's Mask. Yeah, they, they got a lot of Bumba's Masks. It's, it's pretty strong because it, it gives you more damage on the jungle camps, which speeds up your clear, which in turn speeds up your farm. And uh, I think that's why we're seeing that picked up on the AMC. Yeah, you know, on top of that, with the just inherent... It, uh, mana that comes along with that amc very mana intensive god always good to get him a little bit more uh more going in that factor but already off the bat a little bit of aggression coming out from tarrant county college feeling confident to take the speed buff away from the members of florida poly purple and they do have a potential to do something here a heavy rotation four people from tarrant county or excuse me there florida poly purple and they actually end up nearly going down there Tarrant County College still hovering around. Blink comes out from Glavis. He goes ahead and goes for the somersault, getting off a little bit more damage. One more on attack, and there it is. Glavis finding the kill. First blood going out to the way of Tarrant County. Osaf going in as well, looking to find the last hit. Glavis going to drop pretty low here as well. Um, I think the problem there for Flores Holly was they didn't back off once uh, Tarrant County secured the speed buff. By getting the last hit on that speed buff, it allowed Y Try and Glavis to hit level two. And at level two is a massive difference from level one. You get another ability. And so they were able to take that fight 2v4, even though the solo laner and jungler rotated and win that fight and pick up first blood. So first blood goes away of Tarrant County, securing them a solid 1,000 gold lead along with that speed steal. Well, I mean, you mentioned it earlier, uh, earlier, Tarrant County, the veterans of this uh, of this league, really, they've been around for split after split, and now all of a sudden, they're going, they're making a very strong showing into this game, which shouldn't be really a surprise to anyone. Over on the left side, Ratcheteer wanted to try and steal away the side harpies from Florida Poly Purple, but wasn't able to do so, so now everyone just returning back to their lanes and doing some standard farming here. But I kind of want to get your comments on Kronos, starting with that Soul Trap, going to go for that immediate rush into the Book of Toth. I mean, is that a little bit over-greedy? Um, I don't think it's over-greedy. It's a build actually we've been seeing a lot uh, in both ranked and the competitive scene. On characters like Kronos, you want to hit late game as fast as possible. So the mindset there is, okay, starter items aren't really doing too much for me in terms of hitting late game. Things like Boomba's Masks, uh, things like Sands of Time don't do much for uh, your late game. So you just pick up the Book of Thoth level 2 right away and rush it as fast as possible. Well, right now, it appears to not be doing much for him at all, as he already got poked out of lane, has very little to no mana, and it looks like Tarrant County has no problem going ahead and diving this back harpy. There's the ultimate coming out from Ganesha, and there's the huge burst of damage coming out from Y Try. He is not even phased slightly by any potential of a rotation coming out from August. They're basically just controlling the jungle and the pacing, and Osa over on the right side, finding a kill. Finds that kill 2v1 as well. Big win for Tarrant County there. Uh, thinking slowly and DinoCon having trouble fighting that level 5 Ratatoster. He's gotten a lot of farm that the members of Florida Poly hasn't. So he's in a position to take a fight like that. Well, in the middle lane, why try and Ratchet here just bullying out and really keeping the flow? And you can already see huge level discrepancies across the board. Level 5s on both middle and uh, jungle. Excuse me, middle and solo as a kill goes down. Glaive is finding it on the August with a combined effort of Puckham. They're going to go ahead and clear this red buff out as well. But, you know, all across the map, you just see that no one has an ultimate on the side of Florida Poly Purple. Meanwhile, everyone has an ultimate on the opposite end of Tarrant Co County College. So definitely not a, a smooth start thus far. Speed actually going to be stolen away by Florida Poly. Last hit by the Kronos. Pretty good plate from him there but you see tarrant county just picking this early game comp and running with it they've stolen speed once and they've stolen red twice now uh they're just in the enemy jungle denying farm as much as possible with this hyper aggressive ganesha soul and ratatosker uh core tri uh, trio meanwhile in right lane a fight breaks out yeah but it's not gonna really go anywhere however i will say you know you're in a bad spot when the support has made his way all the way over to the soul lane, and you're just like, whoa, man, I'm, I'm just chilling here trying to farm. I'm already having trouble against one guy, and then you bring this fat guy here too? This is not fair. 
but it's not really going to matter. He's good. He's just going to have to accept the loss and the loss of his blue buff. Mm, Glavis playing a little greedy here, going for the Rangas mask, something that you only really buy if you're looking to get a lot of kills and assists early. And that's exactly what Glavis has been doing as he makes this rotation onto the right lane. Not going to find anything. Rack going to go in the air, actually. Oh, Osoth getting the knock up in Glavis just eliminates him. There was nothing to be done there. As soon as he got bulled by the ultimate from the uh, from the Awelix, it was just a done deal there. But now, even on top of all that, it appears that, yeah, Puckham was successfully able to take the Oracles as well. So they got a kill in right side. 1v2, Puckham gets the Oracles. I'm not seeing any signs of life here by Florida Poly Purple. I think they drafted too late game with this Chrono Smid, um, and they have not been successful in warding off their jungle and defending from these invades. You know, Tarrant County making these aggressive plays, looking to make these invades and strip farm off the map for Florida Poly, and they're succeeding, and Florida Poly just isn't doing anything to stop it. And meanwhile, over the right side, Osoth, just like you mentioned, they're not able to do anything to stop it, as two members of Florida Poly Purple are just dancing around this uh, this rad tasker is no problem, going ahead and fighting 1v2, and even in the middle lane, the Kronos pick that they're really relying on to get something done, just not pulling anything together, goes down the middle lane to a combined effort of wide try and Ratcheteer. Yeah, just burst it down so quickly. Level 5 to Y tries level 7. Ratchet here also level 7. Didn't even have time to get that Chrono Assault off. Just obliterated, removed from the map entirely. Uh, really good coordination there. Picking up that kill on the Chronos before he's able to get the ult off. Dino you know, Con looking to take out these fire elementals. And this is the first bit of farm on the map that uh, Laura Polly looks like they're going to get. Well, not even all of it. He had to give up the big minion because he didn't want to stick around way too long and risk the potential of a uh, jungler roaming his way over and picking him up. He's really that far behind. But meanwhile, over on the left of the map, it looks like Glavy is not going to have any trouble picking up Jabberjong, who even going into the ultimate was able to get out. August in a bad situation as well. As it looks like Ratcheteer tried to hold him up just long enough for his AD carry to get nearby, but Puckham not able to find that kill. But now it's King Slowly who's in the dangerous spot as he's going to be taking quite a bit of damage. Speed buff trying trying to get close to distance and maybe pick up the kill, but it's not gonna happen. Ratcheteer, not afraid to go into the tower, throws out the, nope, not gonna get that damage either. And there's the beats coming out from Puckham to get into a safe situation. Florida Poly Purple desperately wanna get something out of this, but they better be careful. They still are extremely far behind. And there's a Glavius coming back in to this fight to try and pick up something of her own. Fafnir solo, Glavius not able to get the kill there. But it does look like Tarrant County steals away the speed buff. Meanwhile, Rat ulting right lane, getting the solo kill under the tier 2 tower. Osaf solo kill onto Dino Con V is a 3 level difference now. Separating the two solo laners is something you don't want to see because that Sun Wukong needs to have an impact on the game. Uh, and this Rat is just going to have an impact that Sun Wukong is not. Well, have. the unfortunate bit is, with the exception of the AD carry roll, there's a three-level disparity or greater in most positions. You look at Rad Tasker versus Sun Kong, three levels. Uh, you look at the junglers, three levels. Mid laners, three levels. And then, uh, you know, even the supports, three levels. So the only thing that's actually still relatively close is the AD carries, and that's still a two-level differential. Meanwhile, the mid lane, oh, God, why try? Is still blowing up Jabber Dom. Absolutely, he's just doing so much damage at this point in the game. He has a soul stone, so he's getting that extra 40 power as long as he utilizes that passive properly. And he's just blowing people up from a safe range too. He took that fight 2v1. So, unfortunately, Florida Poly Purple not looking good in this game. What are they going to need to do to get the pacing back? Obviously, make it to the late game, but you know, where does the bleeding stop? And how do you kind of just mitigate the losses that you've been experiencing? At this point, I don't want to say it's over. But it's looking, uh, ah, it's looking, it's looking grim. It, they still have their towers. Absolutely, it can't be. It towers. can't be over. It can't be over until those towers are gone. So there's there's signs of life. I think. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. What what, what they've got to do really is a hope that Trent County makes a mistake, which they will. They're humans, you know. Nobody's gonna play a perfect game. Uh, and Florida Poly has to really capitalize on those mistakes heavily to get themselves back into this game. But it looks like Tarrant County doesn't want to make any mistakes as they ward up the Gold Fury and get it for free. Oh, but August put himself in a bad position as it looks like Osoth having no problem going up against three members of Florida Poly Purple on the back end. And there's a lot of ultimates coming out from Florida Poly Purple, but it's just not resulting in enough damage to get a single kill. In fact, killing spree for Y Try, who is able to pick up a, a couple of his own. And now the only members left are a lone Soul Kong, Osiris, and a. Nope, actually, take take the Soul Kong off that list. Kronos and Kerninos. Excuse me, saw that one a little wrong there. And. Two squishy people to try and defend against a whole team of Tarrant County College is not going to work out. 
Yep, Tarrant County, realizing they're a little low, maybe not able to get this mid tower. Sure, there's five of them and only two on the side of Florida Poly, but you know, might as well make the safe play, not make those mistakes that I was talking about and not give Florida Poly a chance to capitalize on those mistakes. Uh, I would guess they're gonna go for portal here. It's gonna spawn in five seconds. As you see, their team just rotate to it. And uh, they're gonna, probably gonna pick this up for free as well. Yeah, they, they're gonna be able to get this one. I don't really see any reason that Florida Poly Purple wants to try and defend this. Uh, they're severely behind. Ultimates are coming back. Oh, okay, I was gonna say, Terran County College there might is. just drop it on accident, and then all of a sudden, you know, hold on, we can make an argument here, but now they, they, they recognize that they just need to go ahead and complete that one. But small victory here. It looks like Dino Convy is able to actually pick up the speed buff for their own team. So, hey, Florida Poly Purple really getting their opportunities here. Oh, 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 yeah, that was taken. It was taken. <laughs> As Rat steals it away, just, just and gives it your words back in your mouth. Hey, yeah, I was looking for the small wins. <laughs> I was looking for the small wins. They almost had it. Rat came up. Acorns. All right. Never mind. Yeah, Wukong looking for the small one as well, but Rat going to steal it away. No problem. Speed buff on that Ganesha. That's going to be one fast elephant running at you with a level lead. That's scary. He hits pretty hard. That's this Ganesha is going to do a lot of damage for his support. Well, Ganesha going under tower to try and do a little bit more damage onto the opposing support as uh, we're about to see a little bit of a tank slap off. But the fight's breaking out over on the right end of the map. And why try almost picking it up the damage? Not going to be able to get the distance, though. Uh, Osoth and why try just going to go ahead and clear out this tower. No big deal there. Wow, left lane. Yeah, left lane, a little bit of an ADC box off as uh, AMC almost was able to take down August. But unfortunately for Puckham, he's uh, not extremely far ahead of the Kuranos. In fact, Kuranos has the red buff here, so he does have a slight advantage. If he can catch Puckham out of position there, almost almost gets him with the Brassing uh, Bamble. Yep. Fafnir on the way as well. Glavis picks up a kill. Fafnir going to jump on a Puckham in the left lane as well as that picks up a kill on Osiris. No, no, that didn't happen. So <laughs> Fafnir is just going to chase it. Onto this uh, Puckham, who's a little bit out of position, doesn't have an escape mechanic, but is taking quite a bit of damage. This could actually be the first kill going in favor of Florida Poly Purple. No, nope, no, nope, he's going to be able to walk away just fine. All right, I had faith, I had hope, and unfortunately is going to get returned with Glavius picking up the kill onto RoboDev. Glavius 6 0 and 4, Osaf 4 0 and 6. We have Ytry 3 0 and 5. We have Ratcheteer suicide into towers. Not sure what's That technically going on there. is a kill in favor of Florida Poly Purple. It's not on the scoreboard, but there is at least a death. And it was on the chaos side, so I'm counting it. I don't know, dude. The scoreboard doesn't lie, but I'll have to take your word for it. Yeah, The scoreboard reads 15-0. We're going with a uh, Major's line of thought. Then it might be 15-1, but either way, this game is very one-sided. Tarrant County with the 14,000 gold lead and yeah. the victory. Yeah, I mean, you know, 13 minutes in, 15-0, to zero. A little over 14,000 gold differential. I don't really know if I've ever seen a deficit that large pre-50 minutes be overturned. I mean, it, that's a pretty straightforward win. We talked about it before we got into the game. Tarrant County College is a team that's been around a while. They've been through some splits. I mean, heck, even before the AVGL leagues, we could talk about Pockham. We could talk about Glavius. We could talk about Osoth being on different challenger level teams in the past. So, you know, each of these guys have definitely made their names known in the competitive smite scene and you recognize them. I actually remember Ratchet here from even that far back as well, but now they've all of a sudden just happened to be collegiate players. So it's worked out very well for them. And I think Florida Poly Purple has some different strategies going here. I, I think the, the team composition they drafted wasn't necessarily bad. It was just greedy. And if you're going to play greedy, you have to know where you can give up uh, certain objectives and where you have to make a final stand. Yeah, you know, like you were saying, the members of Tarrant County have made a name for themselves. You know, all of these players from the amateur scene – and it's going to be up to Florida Poly to try to make a name for themselves. We'll be right back with game two of Tarrant County College versus Florida Poly. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. The teams have flipped sides, but have they flipped stories? Florida Poly Purple didn't have exactly the best performance against Tarrant County. as It ended in a 15-0 victory in their favor within 15 minutes. Now, can they turn the pages and possibly take game two to bring us into a game three? We're going to find out. They're going to have to draft something pretty early game to deal with the pressure that Tarrant County College has proven that they like to put on the map. So we're going to see how this planning phase goes. Rat going to get banned out right away. They don't want to deal with that at all. Osaf had a huge impact on that Radatasker last game. But the question still remains, was that because of Osaf playing a great Radatasker? Was it because of the character being great innately? Or was it possibly because it ended up... It you know, very poorly after those first couple of kills. I mean, there's a lot of factors here that we just can't exactly determine where the point of failure was heaviest. And I don't know if I, I necessarily agree with the Rat Tasker fan. Okay, fair enough. I think it's maybe a little bit of both. Uh, Ardio going to be banned out. Um, Tarrant County almost forced to ban Ardio because Flora Poly does have first pick and Ardio being so strong. You don't want Flora, uh, Flora Poly getting their hands on her. Well, now Florida Poly has to decide what they hated the second most in that last game as they still have to ban out something else. Now, Koo still left on the table. If you want to talk about scary, if we have a, a player who's very strong with Koo, uh, Osoth showed signs of a, uh, of a guy who liked to play Koo. So I, I'm, I'm waiting to see on that one. But instead, they go ahead and elect to ban out Ganesha. Didn't like the silence from last game. And now they're challenged with first pick as Chair County banned out the Scotty. And they're going to take the Kukulin right away from Osaf. Just like you said, maybe they recognize Osaf uh, being a threat on that Kukulin. Going to take it away. Pretty strong first pick overall uh, as well. You know, good good front line, good damage, good laning presence. He's just a really strong player. Or, uh, sorry, a really strong god overall. So good first pick coming out from them. Well, now Tarrant County actually going for a really more interesting team composition in comparison to the last game, which seemed a bit more safe. Or maybe safe's the wrong word here, but nonetheless, they actually first, play, first picked Shablanke and Thanatos, uh, two characters that I can say honestly aren't played that much in competitive or even minor leagues. Yeah, I think Tarrant County is really feeling themselves here. They think they can win with whatever, and it's going to be up to uh, Florida Poly to prove them wrong as they lock in the Nemesis. Like we were saying earlier, Nemesis a really potent character in a team environment, and hopefully they're able to, you know, work as a team and pick those targets off in these team fights using that Nemesis ult. Now, the beauty of the situation for Ter or excuse me, for Florida Poly Purple is that if they can catch out this Thanatos, put him behind early. Thanatos is not a very strong character from behind. He usually needs to really leverage that Death Scythe and give himself the maximum amount of opportunities to just catch people out of position. But if he's the one who's not exactly ramping out enough damage to scare people off with that Death Scythe, outside of his ultimate, he's got very low mobility. Absolutely. I mean, he's got the slow immunity on his, uh, on his two, but... That's not too big of a deal for most of the characters on Florida Poly, aside from the Nemesis, obviously, who is very reliant on slows. But they can just pick around that and uh, draft more hard CC rather than slows as Tarrant County finishes off the first rounds of picks with a Freya. Now, this is as hyper-aggressive as you can possibly get on one end. You already have Shablanke, and now you all of a sudden you've added Freya to the mix. Now, where these characters are going is still left to question. Tarrant County, you could honestly put... Thanatos in the solo lane if you wanted to. You could put Shablanke, hypothetically speaking, in the middle lane to kind of fill out that Chiron style uh, of play. Or you could put Freya in the middle lane. And then I, you can kind of mix all in between all that. Yeah, I'd put my money on the Freya mid. Um, she just has the best clear out of the two. So Shablanke definitely a character that needs a little bit of help clearing. So he could go mid as well, you know, have that Thanatos to help him out as far as clear goes. So we'll have to see once the game loads up. But uh, going into the second round of bans, we're going to see an Erlang Shen ban coming out from Florida Poly. Florida Poly also uh, has to pick the last ban in Tarrant County, picking up the ban onto Geb as well as Fafnir. Pretty straightforward there. But Florida Poly Purple... What is it that they are afraid of here? Because I don't think that they 100% know themselves where all these picks are going. So it's a hard argument to make that they know what to particularly ban here. Right. I think just their aggressive play style leads to them getting picks very often. And Geb is a very, very strong support at, you know, stopping those picks from happening with that extra health and that cleanse that that shield provides. So I think they're just opening up as many opportunities as possible for them to find picks in the early game by removing the Geb Morgan. shield from the equation. So taking the Morgan off the table, Florida Poly Purple. Just not wanting to deal with it. No, thank you. Not, or, yeah. Or, yeah, Erlingshin. That's right. 
Uh, so, Mor go ahead. Uh, Morgan, definitely kind of a weird band here because it looks like Tarrant County, no matter where the characters are going, I would bet that Jungle and Mid are already picked. And those are the kind of the positions you see Morgan in most often. So it's really weird to see the Morgan band out. Not sure what the thought process is there, but uh, why try going to pick Thor for his team? Uh, that's likely going to be a support Thor, maybe? They have the Thanatos already. I don't know. This team comp is weird. We're going to have to see where everybody goes. Yeah, pretty much all bets are off. Thor support can be a thing in its own way. Thanatos support can be a thing in its own way. I mean, at this point, I think Tarrant County is experimenting with their own line of play here just to kind of... I don't know, See, test the water, see what they can do, uh, and maybe something. It's kind of like the throw crap at the wall and see what sticks theory where, you know, this is obviously not your standard team composition. This is not some, like, uber secret strategy, but you kind of can play around with certain ideas. Like, if we combine these two elements together, what, what results do we see? What do we like from it? What do we not like from it? And what can we possibly expand upon from a team composition involving these three characters? So say, for example, they have an idea of using the double dunk uh, assassin style where they have one in the solo lane and one in the uh, jungle. And, you know, we'll, we'll have to wait and see where excuse me, everyone goes as it looks like the final uh, picks for Tarrant County is going to be Bologna. Yeah, Bologna going to round out that lineup. She has good lane pressure, so she can kind of deal with the Kukulin, who we were talking about earlier, has that good lane presence. Bologna, with those AoE cleave auto attacks, can clear the lane just as well, if not better. So looking to apply pressure in the solo lane with that kind of weird, but not too weird, Bologna pick. And then, of course, with Bacchus on the other end, both these teams are going to go into the next match with a new mindset. One side looking to try and stay in it to bring it to round three, and the other side looking to see what they can do with this interesting team composition. But either way, you'll have to stay tuned to find out the results. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, everyone. Game two, Florida Poly Purple versus Tarrant County. Last game didn't go so well for Florida, but this time around, they want to try and take a stab at the members of Tarrant County, the veteran team in the AVGL League. So this time, what is it going to take for them to change up the results of last game? I honestly couldn't tell you because I have no idea what Tarrant County is doing. Let's let's go through Tarrant County's roster real quick. Osaf, the solo laner, is taking the Thor into the solo lane. Lavis playing Thanos the Strongle. I think we might have been able to expect that. Why try is playing Freya mid, and then Ratcheteer and Puckham are playing a Bologna Jubilanke lane. Thoughts? Well, now, I mean, so the thing is that with Thanos roaming around, anything's possible. Assuming that you get kills, anything's possible because he's so powerful. That Death Scythe is just so much damage. And so when you combine that with just the snowball potential of a lane like Bologna and uh, Jablanke, who Mark actually went for right a, now. yeah, they actually went in for the very aggressive attempt at getting the kill onto these two. And they seem to have some kind of strategy as a horrific emble was used, but August taking the better in this trade somewhat. He's landing more autos, but there it is missing this spear. He's going to be in a lot more trouble now against Ratcheteer, who's all in committed on the game. His first blood, not going to be able to get this one. They're going to just back off. Pump, uh, Puckham starts up the red buff and is at least able to get one of them. Yeah. And now it's up to Ratcheteer to get back into a safe position so that they don't give up the first blood of their own. But Terran County really showing that aggressive mentality that we saw last game. Yeah, they don't want to give anything up right from the start. And I think Terran County won that even though there was no kills simply because their jungler and their mid laner were able to go farm. Meanwhile... Or Polly's jungle limit laner have to come defend that red invade. So they're just now hitting level two, whereas uh, Glavis and Ytry are going to be level three pretty soon. Ytry hitting level three already. Well, and now there is another factor of using that horrific gimbal, but with it being entirely for aggressive purposes, and I didn't see if a shell was popped. Yeah, it was pop. So it was used. So both active sets were used. So yeah, in, in effect, Tarrant County won that in all the fa in all entirety. There was no actual win to be had for Florida. Now, uh, I was gonna say I was sitting here staring at Thanatos as he uh he seemed to have something on his mind, and apparently it was a blink combination with uh, Death Sight right onto the enemy uh, Soul Laner. So that's that's a kill going to Tarrant County quite decisively. Yep, uh, Glavis just making a play early with that blink he doesn't have beads so he's easy to be cc'd out but he does have the blink and that's the trade-off when you take blink in the jungle you can make those aggressive plays like that but you don't have the safety of uh, purification beads so he did a really good job of utilizing uh you know that kind of aggressive advantage he had by going blink well and i like the mindset too like i'm thanatos i living longer is not an option there's no survive thanatos mode there's just kill mode and not kill mode and, and uh, uh Tarrant County are in kill mode. Yeah, they're more than just in kill mode. They're gonna go ahead and pick up the kill onto Robodev, who was under tower, and they almost oh there it is! They got an official one! Right <laughs> August was able to take Ratcheteer! Florida Poly Purple can easily take that as a win in their own way. Oh two! Double! Puckham just couldn't let it go! There it is! So the Florida Poly Purple finding a string of kills, maybe able to get another one on the Y Trust. Why well, try, excuse me, and uh, it gets a slow, but no ultimate available, nothing else in the tank. That's going to be a wash, but at least they will pick up those kills as one goes down in favor of Tarrant County on the right side of the map. I don't know if the cameraman caught it, but Osaf and Glavis both came down from the sky out of their ultimates right on the hook of the wind at the exact same second. The, That's coordination right there. The double dunk. So yeah, just showing, uh, just showing that experimentation that they've probably been working with this a little bit more than just, oh hey, let's just play uh, random gods. And there's the blink. There's the death scythe immediately on the soul, losing half her health just in one combination. And now all the members of Tarrant County making their way over into the enemy jungle camps to maybe pick up a speed or a couple of back harpies as well. Yep, invading back harpies, not even. They're just wrapping around the tower to look for a kill. This is a greedy play coming out of Tarrant County. They're feeling themselves oh. as Glavis runs right through the tower. Uh, and they just immediately used. I think that was a little preemptive. Is uh, Soul really thought he was going to come after her with something. I'm not even sure what. Link already down. I don't believe he has an ultimate available, or at least, yeah, it was used very recently. So that ideally should have been communicated. I, I think that that's going to really come back and haunt. Uh, 
you know, haunt Juggerdonk in the near future because he's not going to have that available to try and defend against an actual Blink Death Scythe combination. Speaking of defending, one thing they don't have to defend against finally is a speed buff invade as they're able to pick up their speed buff without any sort of contest. Osaf with the hammer double tap, two levels up, chunks Kakulin doing almost half of his health in a single hammer. He's playing up in that tower now looking to get that kill. You know, and the one thing I want to go back to is the eighty k rule because even though August has not necessarily played phenomenally, I have to give him credit. He's been going up against Punkum with the same level of aggression and the same level of boxing. I, I think that uh, of P Florida Poly Purple, August doing pretty well. Yeah, Florida. Uh, I guess picking up that double kill two and zero, sitting pretty both the kills for his team. But it looks yeah. like Tarrant County. Gonna make a play onto this Kakul and Thanatos in the air, lands. And, and uh, there it is, up. cleans okay. it up. Glavis coming down with the uh, with the ultimate is able to secure that kill and that brings the scoreline to four and two in favor of Tarrant County. Starting to look like a repeat of last game. The only difference is, is that we actually see some kills on the scoreboard in favor of Florida Body Purple. So can on her take the lead in August, run the charge for them to be able to pick up a win here. As far as leads go, Tarrant County gonna have about a 2,000 gold lead and about a 3,500 experience lead. So definitely leading the charge this game as well with the aggression, finding themselves a solid lead and uh, they're gonna see if they're able to translate that into a win as why try solo invade back camps. Talk about greedy. I mean, and just no attempt at a punish. And the thing is, they have to know is that she's there. That's a warded area that she walked over just to get to that back harpy. So they're really afraid of anything being done by Tarrant County. Why try has not been punished at all for being out of position. Osaf uh, with another double tap onto this Kakulin. Kakulin sitting at 1 HP now. Osaf wants this kill, but Kakulin going to run away and back under his tier 2, or at least close to his soul. Going to get banished in the mid lane. Why try one more auto? Oh, missed it. And is he going to turn into not Freya soon? Ah, he gave up and just went ahead and went for the Valkyrie's discretion. That's Hey, hold on here. Nemesis coming in the backside. Why try in a little bit of trouble? And a combined effort of Florida to Poly Purple is able to at least secure the kill onto the middle lane. Juggerdog did go down, but why try going down as well? That's still a big win for these guys. One for one trade, yeah. I mean, the kill did go to Freya, and Freya definitely cares about sells with kills. He's all over in the right side. In. Oh, and on the left side, too. Also, I find the kill on the right. And then me, meanwhile, over on the left, puck him in a boxing match with August. But it's not a 1v1. Glavius coming in to secure that kill. And I think puck him is a little bit uh, agitated as he wanted to go ahead and build up a, a couple of passive stacks there. Doesn't even have a single one just yet. But I don't think uh, I don't think Glavius is going to feel too bad for him. Meanwhile, Ratchet here in a bit of an awkward position of his own. Glavius coming in on the backside, looking at three members of Terran. County, excuse me, Florida Poly Purple, and there it begins. Now the terror starts up. Tarrant County is not able to keep up with the, the damage that's coming out from the main damage dealers of Tarrant County. And there's a lot of it. This Freya is swinging. Only level 8, Glavis, uh, just hit level 9 now, but Glavis level 10 as well. That Scythe is going to be maxed out as of level 9. He's going to be her hitting really hard, especially once he gets that Heart Seeker online. Because right now, he already has the Thousand Cold Blade, so it's just a little bit longer before that Death Sight starts doing over half of uh, Florida Poly's carries health. And, you know, 5-0, it's kind of hard to not be a destructive monster. Look at that. Jace is under Tier 2 Tower and is more than likely going to live here. Banish, why try just to make sure that nothing bad happened? But why try might be in a little bit of trouble herself as uh, Glavius has to make his way back over to help. And there's the Valkyrie's discretion. Missing two of the shots. The dunk comes in from Osa. He has to use the stun wall to try and pick up something onto August. But he is able to jump over it. Glavius comes down onto the Freya, excuse me, the uh, Nemesis in the backside. And he's going to be able to walk out. And then even though it looked like a bad scenario for everybody, the only thing that's happened is a one-for-one -one exchange. Freya for Nemesis and a Go Fury in favor of Tarrant County. Absolutely, that entire time, Puckham and Ratcheteer realizing that the duo lane of Florida Polytech was not anywhere near Gold Fury. And just pick that up for free, two of them, not a problem. Playing the objective game, smart play coming out from Terran Tech. Well, it's a slight problem because Shablanke still only has zero stacks. Obviously, uh, Puckham not doing his fair share of the work on this team. 11 kills, you ain't got a single one? Come on, Shablanke, come on. But, you That's know, where you want the kills, too, right? On that exactly. Shablanke. 
Nah, I'm just giving I'm just giving it a little bit of a hard time. Glavius actually has been really the dominating force of Tarrant County. I mean, Freya's had her her sparks, but really, I think that is coming down to the fact that every time Thanatos comes around Soul, all the escapes, all the sanctuaries, every bit of you know defensive maneuver you can make is, is being used instantly because you just can't afford to allow yourself to be vulnerable around Thanatos. He will not call you the next day. It won't happen. Yeah, you don't want to find yourself vulnerable around Thanatos, and you don't want to find yourself vulnerable around Glavis, who's proven as of last game that he likes to play as aggressive as possible, and he's utilizing Thanatos to his fullest 7-0 and in 9 minutes. Aggressive is the only word I would use to describe Glavis right now. All right, so a little bit of a boxing match comes out in the dual lane, but August missing the pillar stun, and now it's completely up to Puckham as to whether or not he can punish it. He's going to use the Darks of Knights. Puckham... Took on a little bit more than he asked for, and now it's all up to these auto attacks. Sanctuary U is going to keep him alive a little bit longer, but now the mana. minion disadvantage is going to be the real determining factor. Puckham finding the kill 1v1 in the August, who almost had it if he just landed a couple of autos, and maybe that pillar stun. No, it definitely mattered. The pillar stun miss definitely mattered. Absolutely. Fight breaking out under the tier 2 tower for Florida Polytech. Why try looking to find those big Freya autos? Not gonna find anything and whoops Bacchus out of the class. Good play there as both teams disengage. So big rotation, Terra County making their way over towards the right side of the map. Take the speed buff, maybe look towards the portal demon in the event that there's a fight. Ah, 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 half health nemesis just instantly from Y Try. That heart and yeah, there it is. There's that damage coming out. Bach is forced out into safety as Robo Dev didn't uh, didn't exactly expect that much damage to come out that quickly. And all the members of Terra County gonna pick up the speed buff and make their way over to the respective lanes, not wanting to actually take a, a risk on the portal giant. They probably could have taken Portal Demon if they wanted, but just playing it safe and uh, looking for Dino Con over in the solo lane. Ratchet here making that rotation. It looks like they got a lot of gold from those kills, from those fights. Oh. They just want to back. Just kidding. Thanatos in the air. Yeah, no, as soon as Thanatos lifted up, Ratchet here went in for the Eagles rally, and then just uh, from there, it was a done deal. That was a, that was a kill just locked in. I, I don't really think that there's anybody who would escape that from the solo lane, but thinking, uh, thinking slowly, was able to find the kill on to Puckham. August not getting that one, but that's perfectly fine. Shablanke only having one stack. That's still a ticking t a time bomb that's bound to reach a death point soon. And in fact, Glavius comes over. Oh, okay, August. I respect it. I respect it. Going for the big boy on her place to just try and box him up. He said, I'm not getting out of this. He has speed buff. He's way far ahead of me. He's got heart seeker. I might as well turn and give him my best shot. But beats. Gonna keep Thanatos from getting stunned into that wall and giving uh, August a chance to fight back. Yeah, and he level 14 now, the highest level for Florida Polytech is 11 coming out of August, and Glavis is just running this game. Gonna look for a scythe onto Thinking Slowly, but stunned by Bacchus. Can he find it? <sighs> yeah, he's gonna find it onto Soul, and Soul's not gonna find a break from the damage that just came out of that Death Scythe. I mean, when you're looking at a, what is it now, 9-0 and Thanatos, any death scythe is going to look like an absolute meteor strike to your face. So, I don't know. I mean, Terra County is just playing fairly well for this strange composition, but up in the air, Osoth wants to come down onto DinoCon, and he's going to find, oh my gosh, all that CC. He's going to find himself in a hard position as Koo goes down in really short time. There's a horrific gimbal. Now they're chasing heavily. Oh my oh, god, that ooh. vanish was really powerful. Thanatos up in the air. Glavius is going to come down soon. He misses his target. However, he's still going to get a lot of damage off on a Juggerdon. Only two members left under Florida, uh, under this tier one tower for Florida Poly Purple, and they aren't able to last long. Osoth finding the last kill of his spree of kills in favor of Tarrant County. 19 to 7 reads the scoreboard. A bow, a let's check, 7,500 gold lead and a 14,000 experience lead for Tarrant County, and that's just gonna jump up even higher as that tier one tower falls down. I'm not sure what Florida County has to do at this point to get back in the game. What do you think? I think they press, uh, they press the escape key and they press the concede key, which is actually not in this game, so they can go ahead and press F6. But the point is, is that even though I like the idea of the comeback hits, even though I like the idea of them just, you know, fighting it through, learning the best they can, I, I think that this is hard data to really collect from. It's hard to really get accurate practice from this because outside of mechanical practice, this is not 
this is, this is not really a strategy practice anymore. This is not a point where you can start to think normally or what would normally come up in a given game scenario. And it's, I don't know. I mean, even right now, 4v1? Yeah, 4v1 it took to take down Glavius, and Glavius almost took two people with him. So I, I think that, you know, you take the small wins that you got, you were able to do better. And I don't care what anybody says, this was a better performance than last game. Um, and you move forward and then just look forward to your next match. Yeah, I mean, Terran County Thor actually up in the air gonna land on Dinocon, and he is going to fall to the second tap. No, no. Frey has to alt to pick up the kill there. Uh, Oseth, really good Thor ults this game. He's he's had some really impactful Thor ults. The really smart one, I think, was up at Portal Demon when they were doing Portal Demon, was he ulted just to get vision. Yeah. He has been very sound on his decision making here. Back end, no dev up in a boxing match with Y Try and oh, almost vanished him out of his uh, Belch of the Gods, but wasn't able to do so. August and uh, Chugger Tonk uh, under tier two, or at least one of them was there, and he actually ended up disappearing to the beautiful player from Osoth, the Thor that we were talking about just a minute ago. Meanwhile, this whole time, Puck him over on the left side, taking tier one tower. So I will say this, even though Terran County mechanically is playing very sound, they seem to be very slow about picking up these major objectives that are almost like a checklist item in any given winning uh, winning team or winning streak in a team. You have to pick up these objectives and you have to do so in a timely manner. Otherwise, you get to like these 20 minute marks in the game and, and you're up against a team that's a lot stronger, or at least a lot more veteran, and they completely wipe one of your lanes. Yep, Gold Fury, Y Try is just going to solo it. Freya, with the built in life steal from that passive and the life steal from the Bancroft's talent, able to pick that up by herself, just does a lot of damage. That character does an absurd amount of damage. I mean, when you're this far ahead, everything looks absurd. There's the Pillar Sun into the flop in the left lane. Puckham going to go ahead and Rice and Jaguar out of there. Agus picks it up. Really good team play coming out from Florida Poly, that flop securing the kill for them as Puckham falls. Now 1 and 3, having a rough game. Lavius actually going to come in, and, well, it was a 1v3. Then the rest of August's teammates kind of left him out to dry. I mean, they didn't know he was there. I don't think, yeah, there's no ward vision anywhere near there. So they didn't know that they had just was kind of lurking around. But just the, the fact that Glavius is just willing to walk up in a group of people or blink up into a group of people and see what he can get, uh, that's 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 a, that's a very bad sign. Why well, try doing a ridiculous amount of damage on the Robo Dev, who is going to be executed from the ultimate from the Thanatos. And uh, thinking slowly, he's going to have to think slowly as he was banished up in the air, taken down by Glavios at landing. So tier two tower taken off the map. And now Tarrant County standing strong at 26 to nine. It's just going to take their pick of the litter. Juggerdonk is next on the, oh, look at that. That's what you get. That's what you get for chasing a soul that close from behind. And then on top of that, uh, Osaka was able to actually uh, finish off the Juggerdonk soul, but at the end of the day, they were they did lose both Thanatos and Freya Whitry, getting a little bit greedy as well as Glavius. Yeah, Turin County just playing loose and sloppy at this point. They're all veteran players, and they know better than to make these kind of mistakes and play super greedy up behind these tier two towers. I think they assume the game is over at this point, and they're just kind of playing for fun. Uh, again, very very loose, sloppy play coming up from Terran, but I'm not sure it matters. I mean, you know, I, I don't think about it. I really don't. 13K before 20 minutes, that's that's a very hard lead to, to mess up. I mean, even if we do get to the dream scenario where these guys make it to a much, much later stage of the game, I mean, the only heavy damage dealer for Florida Poly Purple, excuse me, Florida Poly Purple seems to be Soul. I, I don't know. It's just a tall task to, to try and accomplish to get to the late game and win said late game when you're looking at Chablanca. Freya. Uh, triple Bologna all. Yeah, Triple Bologna all into a lot of damage coming out from Osa, who is now unstoppable. And this really is just going to be, yeah, this really is just going to be a wash as Florida Poly Purple is going to just try and retreat, get everything they can to get him back to base. But Osa might be in a little bit of trouble here as he's forced up into his ultimate. Glavius comes down on the Robo Dev and finds that kill. And now Ratcheteer and uh, Glavius just holding these members stuck under their own tower. Thor, Osoth getting immediately out into a safe position as Juggerdonk looking towards Ratcheteer, maybe to get something out of it. Ultimate to use the stun and give the opportunity for Freya to get another shot of Valkyrie's discretion off. That was nice. I like that. I, I really do like that. She was up in the air and then Thantos came down, stun, and then all of a sudden, all right, two more shots. And of course, the kill still went to Glavius. However, I think that is definitely something that people are going to be considering later on. Yeah, Glavis is just a sniper 
you know, with these death slice, uh, right off the blink, he's got a lot of uh, accuracy. He's blinking and hitting the death slice just like that every single time, not missing. I don't think I've seen him miss one blink of death scythe. And with the amount of damage coming out from a level 18 Thanatos' death scythe, that, that pretty much spells death for whoever's getting hit by that flying scythe. Well, I mean, he's played like it. He's played like an absolute monster this game. He's actually almost half the kills for Tarrant County, 14 and 2, with a kill total for Tarrant County of 30. His kill part participation has obviously been over 50%. So this guy has been all over the map. And yeah, and that's just the story of Thanatos. You get ahead early and you just ruin everyone's day. But I guess you might want to be careful. If you know that someone just did Fire Giant, jumping like that is a little risky. However, we're going to see a Eagles Rally come out as Ratcheteer wants to initiate this fight. They've already got the opportunity, but why try a little bit too aggressive? In fact, there's actually only two members of Tarrant County that took on all five members of Florida Bay or Florida Poly, and uh, they didn't actually get anything there, at least not yet. Thanatos oh hitting that... Uh, Hitting that death scythe did a huge amount of damage to thinking slowly. But Robo Dev more than likely to go down here as Osoth finds his way on the backside. And Thanos is up in the air looking to catch someone out. Finds the Soul Lane Dinoco. It looks like they're just focused on picking the. Oh, Juggerdonk. Poor you. Poor Juggerdonk. So, uh, Terran County popping the girdle. They want to take this Phoenix. Absolutely. Yeah. Thor Elisaf has had some nice throws this game. He, he's used them perfectly. It's not the hardest ability in the world to hit, but knowing when to use it can be an art form itself, and Elisaf has uh, proven that. Even though he's a solo leaner, he can hit those throws. He, he knows when to throw and uh, pull out those long range stuns for his team. Well, Tarrant County, only one tower left, and uh, just the remainder of the Phoenixes, two left on that, so pretty much got their pick of the map. I do have to say, I'm a little surprised that Florida Poly Purple hasn't decided to surrender, and I'm not saying they should or they shouldn't. I'm just surprised after we saw them surrender in the first game. That's, that's pretty much the end of that state. Yeah, Tarrant County going to go ahead and barrel down this lane. And when I say barrel, I mean kind of roll just a little bit. Only three members of them. Now here, they right? barrel. doesn't care <laughs> it goes in anyway. Buckham taking a lot of damage from Agus Bagus. Gonna fall from Puckham's damage in a Hey! Puckham finally got a like, second kill as Osoth comes in the backside and uh, just dunks, leaves, and they start to regen up. So, uh, congratulations, Puckham got a second kill. Uh, we're 21 minutes into the game, 34 kills, and he only has two. <laughs> Uh, I love giving people crap sometimes. But there it is, Tarrant County starting to lay siege to this Phoenix. And uh, by himself, Glavius is looking down multiple members of Florida Poly. Eh, you're not getting that. You're not getting that. He got the execute. He's, He's dead. It. Ah! Oh, okay, I was going to say. <laughs> He's yeah. getting it. Yeah, he, uh, he actually picked up the kill there and uh, walked out. Almost. I actually really want to know what was the final tick of damage. I couldn't tell if that was well true damage that just kind of took that last bit of his health or if somebody actually used an ability. Either way, he goes down 14 to 35, so a much different kill line than what we saw last game. Credit to Florida Purple, Florida Poly Purple for actually picking up a, a couple kills there. And actually a pretty nuanced play by Glavis diving that fountain, um, showing that he knows the game well because he got the soul into execute range but then soul used to separate so she was completely immune so he had to stay in the air he, you, you can't execute an immune target but that immunity also means you don't heal from the well so even though soul was in the well she wasn't healing at all and the second that this uh this ended because she wasn't healing from the well glavis comes in with the execute and picks up the kill so definitely playing greedy but an interesting little play to show that Glavis knows the game inside and out. Oh, yeah, and not only does he know this, you know, Thanatos character very well, he also knows the soul very well because you have to time when he's coming out of that, uh, out of that disasperate. Otherwise, you're going to miss out on the execute opportunity, and now all of a sudden you just stun somebody and you're sitting in true damage for no reason. Tarrant County, four members coming down the left side of the map now, looking to lay siege to this final Phoenix and close the game out. It's looking grim. It's looking bad. It's not looking good. You say whatever you want. The game's probably over at this point. Split this cake however you want it, but it's already served. Uh, that's uh, pretty much the cheesiest way I can describe in a dessert fashion that the game is pretty much over. Tarrant County, looking at the last Phoenix available to the members of Florida Poly Purple, they should be able to grab this one easy. I don't see any reason for them not to be able to do so. It's more or less when Ratcheteer wants to dive, and then they just all blow up a target. I mean, really, I think August is the highest priority target if you're afraid of any kind of comeback. August, sitting at 
five and six, which is very respectable. He's been the main factor of getting this team, you know, any kind of kills or any kind of opportunity. But why try on the back end in a bit of an awkward position? Does take a lot of damage, but Glavius finds the kill on a thinking slowly as Robo Dev goes down as well to Glavius. Double kill. And now the return back over to where the real fight is happening. Triple kill for Glavius. Is he going for the quadra? Is he going for the no nope, Pakum, you scumbag. You don't want to kill anybody for the entirety of the game. But now, now is the time you want to go ahead and take away what could have been a Glavius Pentakill. Doesn't matter. Tarrant County going to charge into the Titan Room and go ahead and end this game 40 to 14 at 25 minutes in the game. Tarrant County to take this series 2 0. Yeah, GG well played to Tarrant County. Um, I don't know if there's much more to say other than 18 and 3. How much more analysis can you do? I mean, Glavis ran that game on that Thanatos. I mean, we could talk about how Shablanke ended the game at 25 minutes with only three stacks. I'm just saying, you 40 kills and you only got three? Come on. Let's do the percentage on that. If we're talking about those Urshan stacks, it looks like he got none because he picked it up fifth. Not sure what he's doing there. But that's going to be the game. Oh, wait, what? with was... Okay, okay. All right. Hey, man, Europe does it. Europe does it. Oh, Heidi Pokemon... Urchin actually picked up uh, very, very often. Uh, I think there was an SPL game where 7 out of 10 members in Europe picked up a Heidi the Urchin. But for Shablanke. I think the game was over at that point. I mean, I agree with that part. But either, either way, we digress. We're going to go ahead and go into a brief pause here. As a, it looks like we have, looking over at my, uh, my good guy, no, no, he's not looking back. Anyway, so we'll be back in just a moment. Don't you guys go anywhere. You all are watching the AVJL Collegiate Smite League. We'll be back in just a moment. 